Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Good morning. Good morning. Go to the what, a day. what a beautiful day the Lord has given us for a baptism. For a baptism. We have uh, run out of bulletins and more are being printed, so that's a good thing. Yay. I'd like to welcome all our guests, especially to the the family of Joan, who will be baptized today. Are there any announcements? If none, to all here in the, in the congregation, to those in the parking lot and anyone on Zoom, feel God's presence and know his everlasting love. Good morning. Good morning, sir. And welcome. It is a joy to gather together as God's people on this beautiful festive day, a very special day, not only for the Guthrie family, but for St. Andrew as well, our first baptism in quite a while. A joy to have our children here, so many children here today. I think the only other announcement I have is our Christian education team, uh, current, now known as the Journey with Jesus team, has been uh, working on our fall program. And uh, we are looking for Sunday school teachers. So we'll, we're looking, this would probably be maybe once a month. Um, and uh, we're, we're working on actually kind of a hybrid program where it would be both in person and on Zoom. Uh, so. For our Zoom folks, if you would like to teach, uh, that would we would certainly work that out as well. Just lift up a uh, request that you give that some prayer and thought, and if you would be willing to lead a Sunday school class occasionally, uh, please let either myself or anyone on the uh, Journey with Jesus team know about that. Let us take a moment and prepare ourselves for worship.
For those who are able, please rise. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and de defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us join together in prayer. O Lord God, your mercy delights us, and the world longs for your loving care. Hear the cries of everyone in need, and turn our hearts to love our neighbors with the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
First reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 30. The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all your undertakings, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your soil. For the Lord will again take delight in prospering you, just as he delighted in prospering your ancestors. When you obey the Lord your God, by observing his commandments and decrees that are written in this book of law. Because you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Surely this commandment that I am commanding you today is not hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will go up, go up to heaven for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it? Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it? No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. The word of the Lord. We'll read responsibly Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you, I trusted all the day long. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You, you lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. Time for our children's message. All the children are welcome to come forward if they would like.
I'll, I'll look at you around the corner here. <laughs> well, thank you all so much for being here today and for coming up this morning. So glad to see you all. So today we're talking a little bit about prayer. We're going to be doing that in a few minutes with the sermon. But prayer is a really important thing and a great gift that God's given us. So how many of you say your prayer is regular? few of you? All right. Very good. So our, our Catholic brothers and sisters called the rosary or beads, and that, that's a way for them to kind of guide through our prayers. And not everybody uses that, but sometimes, you know, it can be really helpful to have a way to think about prayer. So hold up your hand for a minute. All right. So what do we have? We have a thumb and four fingers on it. So if you hold your hand like this, your thumb is the closest to you, right? So that can remind us to pray for those who are closest to us. So maybe our parents or our sisters and brothers, right? Or our grandparents or people we care about, our friends. So, so that, our thumb, which is closest to us, reminds us to pray for those who are closest to us. Now, what do we often use this finger for? Right? Which way do I go? You go that way, right? So that's the finger that often we use to point things out or to guide, right? So that finger reminds us to pray for those who lead us, okay? Whether it's our president or our governor or police or firefighters, pay, pray for those who guide us and take care of us, all right? And the next finger, that's kind of our biggest finger, isn't it? Right? And so that's something to remind us, you know, you have some struggles going on in your life, something you're worried about, something that's kind of big going on. Well, God wants us to pray about, no, nope, you don't have anything like that. Okay. <laughs> we can pray about those things. Anything that we're worried about, God wants us to lift up to him and say, God, I'm really worried about this. Or I'm, or I'm really excited about something, and I wanted to talk to you about that, okay? Now, the next finger, I don't know about you, but on my hands at least, that's kind of the weakest finger, right? I, I sometimes have trouble moving that finger around or doing anything with it. And so that can remind us to pray for those who are in need, okay? People who are sick, Maybe you've got a friend who's sick or somebody you know. You can pray for people who are sick, people that maybe don't have a home or a loving family to take care of them. Okay. And then we're down to the last one. Now, of all of our fingers, which is the smallest? The pinky, you're right. That's it. And that is, I've always used, a way to remind us that God wants us to pray about ourselves, too. God wants you to pray about you, okay? Yeah. And things that are going on in your life, and you can talk to God about that, okay? Doesn't mean we necessarily put ourselves first, but we don't leave ourselves out entirely either, because God wants to hear what we're worried about or thinking about or what's going on in our lives, okay? So the next time, that you feel like praying. And the cool thing about praying is you can do it any time or any place you want to. Just pull out your hand and start. you can work through your prayers. All right? Thank you for coming up. You all look so nice today. The second reading is from the book of Colossians. 
Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ and colleagues, grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Jesus Christ and of the love that you have for all saints because of the hope laid up in you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learn from Ephaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For those who are able, please rise. Let us together speak the gospel acclamation. Alleluia. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and so be Alleluia. Our gospel reading for this fifth Sunday after Pentecost is from the 10th chapter of Luke. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Amen. And Jesus said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. Wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road. When he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them, and he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him. When I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think 
was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers. He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace and peace be with you through the power of the Holy Spirit, from God our Father and from our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As I mentioned during our children's message, today we're going to talk a little more about prayer. One of the first things Paul tells the community of faithful in Colossae is, in our prayers, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith and the love that you have for all the saints. Amen. A powerful, positive statement. I invite you to think about those times in your life when perhaps someone has said that about you. A parent, a neighbor, grandparent, a friend. You are such a blessing to me. I thank God for you and for what you have done for me in my life. Well, what is the effect of such a prayer? Beyond the warm feeling it perhaps brings to our hearts, does such a prayer also bring a blessing to God? To be thanked for the gift of another human being in their presence and action in our lives? I like the idea of being able to please God in this way. A few lines later in our second lesson, Paul writes, We have not ceased praying for you and ask that. Now, well, Paul then goes on with a long list of things he is asking God to provide such things as knowledge of God's will that the people may lead lives worthy of the Lord, that they may bear fruit in every good work, grow in knowledge of God, be made strong, endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks. Quite a list, isn't it? Why, if that prayer were to be fulfilled, if the women and men of the congregation were truly to live that way, there would be nothing that community of faith could not accomplish. Again, what is the effect of such a prayer? Prayer isn't like filling out an order form for an online company after all. I'm pretty sure if Paul forgot a few things on the list, God would still provide what was needed. So is it possible that Paul is doing something a little differently here? Perhaps this prayer is not so much for God's attention, but for the men and women in the congregation. Something like, these are the gifts that will help you most in carrying out the work of the church, as well as you yourselves in your lives. So practice these things. Trust that God will provide them and make use of them joyfully. Now, not to say that Paul is not a great theologian, but this could this also be the first century version of the 
Well, the potluck prayer, you've all heard that, right? Almighty God, we, we ask your blessing on the congregational dinner this week when families with names beginning with A to H will bring main dishes, M through G or G through M will bring salads, and N through Z will bring desserts. Wow. What is the effect of such a prayer? We certainly want God's blessings on all that we do. But it seems, again, there is an important human element to prayer. Now that I am again a parish pastor, for our guests and visitors among us, I, um, before coming here to St. Andrew as a church pastor, I served many years in the hospital setting. But now that I am back in the parish, I have three weddings coming up this summer. And this in turn means that I'm now doing a lot of pre-marriage counseling with the couples. Now there's a long series of questions that we work our way through, but I have found something interesting. And one of the most helpful things I can do in these sessions is to start with prayer. I thank God for the relationship and the strength that the couple brings to each other. We recognize God's presence with us. And we ask God's blessing on the work we are there to do. What is the effect of such a prayer? I do believe God hears our prayers whenever and wherever we may be. So I do believe that we receive God's blessing on our time together and that God blesses the couple. But I have noticed other effects as well. In fact, several years ago, I did kind of an intentional experiment where some of the sessions I began with prayer and some I did not. And I found consistently that when we began our time together in prayer, we were far more focused. We dealt with deeper issues more openly. There was a greater sense of trust in the conversation and with that, greater honesty of thought and feeling. Prayer is something perhaps unusual in the lives of many of these young couples, or at least prayer to begin a meeting. So in addition to the value of giving thanks to God and inviting his action, prayer also brought about a change of mind and a greater focus on the work that was before us. In a typical day as a hospital chaplain, I would spend an hour or two each morning creating visitation lists of those I needed to see that day. An hour or so every morning of almost purely clerical and, you know, that wonderful computer work that challenges so many of us. But before I went and visited those patients. Before I met face to face with women and men dealing with everything from knee surgery to terminal cancer, I spent a few moments in the chapel. I thank God for the opportunity of meeting these people, strangers to me, but intimately known by God. I ask God for strength and wisdom and that God would use me as his servant. What is the effect of such prayer? There is no doubt in my mind that God heard my prayers and guided both the patient and myself in our time together. I 
saw far too much to believe otherwise. Along with this, however, those few moments of quiet in an otherwise fast-paced day allowed for the calming of my own spirit and a movement in my heart or mind from administration to being present with a sister or brother in Christ being open to where that time might lead. Martin Luther has been quoted as saying that when he felt too busy, too rushed, too many things that he had to get done, that he was unable to spend an hour in prayer, it was a signal for him to stop and spend two hours in prayer. Somehow a great many Christians, including myself, often act as if regular prayer is the outcome of an orderly and successful life. That, well, you know, as soon as I get these things organized and these things checked off and this taken care of, well, then, then I will be able to spend wonderful time in conversation with God. We forget that prayer and spending time with God is not the outcome of an orderly and successful life but one of the primary causes for such a life. Let me say that again. We forget that prayer and spending time with God is not the outcome of an orderly and successful life, but one of the primary causes for such a life. I invite and encourage each of you now and in the weeks ahead to put renewed energy into your prayer life. Experiment with prayer and talking with God. Prayer is one of the most powerful tools we have, not only in serving our neighbors, but in taking care of ourselves so that we may live this life God has given us to its fullest. I invite and encourage you for what it will do for your relationship with God and for benefits in daily life to explore the possibilities that prayer can bring you wherever and whenever that might take place in any of the rich and varied forms prayers can take. Amen.
The congregation may remain seated throughout most of the baptism. I'll give you a signal. In holy baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father liberates us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. In the waters of baptism, we are reborn children of God and inheritors of eternal light. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, which is the body of Christ. As we live with him and with his people, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. In Christian love, you are presented Joan Catherine for holy baptism. You should therefore faithfully bring her to the services of God's house and teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. As she grows in years, you should place in her hands the Holy Scriptures and provide for her instruction in the Christian faith, that living in the covenant of their baptism and in communion with the Church, she may lead a godly life until the day of Jesus Christ. Do you promise to fulfill these obligations? We do. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the Church, the creation, and all in need. Good and gracious God, you have placed your word of love in the heart of your Church. Fill your church with compassion that we bear the fruit of your healing mercy to a broken world. God of grace, Amen. you created the earth with seeds sprouting up to new life. We pray for the flourishing of fruit trees and orchards, vines and bushes. Prosper the work of those who plant, tend, harvest and gather. God of grace, Amen. God of all nations, we lift before you the people of Ukraine. Amen. We ask your power at work for those whose lives are being torn apart, both those under assault and those being forced to, into violence beyond their nature. Guide the leaders of all nations that wisdom and comp compassion may reign. Amen. God of grace, hear our prayer. Show us our, your ways and teach us your paths of justice and love. Raise up community and national leaders to challenge and dismantle social structures that perpetrate ethnic, racial, and religious profiling and discrimination. God of grace, Amen. come near to all in need, orchestrate kindness in the face of cruelty, hope where there is despair, love in the face of neglect, comfort where there is death, and healing in illness. We lift before you particular situations or people aloud, silently, or by chat. God of grace, hear our prayer. Turn this community toward neighbors in need. Bring aid and support to those who are poor, beaten down, abused, forgotten, silenced, or avoided. God of grace, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the saints who revealed your love and mercy in this life. Inspired by their witness, strengthen us to live in hope. God of grace, hear our prayer. 
God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, we give you thanks, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and you created heaven and earth. By the gift of water you nourish and sustain us and all living things. By the waters of the flood, you condemn the wicked and save those whom you had chosen, Noah and his family. You led Israel by the pillar of cloud and fire through the sea, out of slavery into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, your beloved Son has set us free from the bondage to sin and death and has opened the way to the joy and freedom of everlasting life. Amen. He made water a sign of the kingdom and of cleansing and rebirth. In obedience to his command, we make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pour out your Holy Spirit so that Joan Catherine may be given new life. Wash away the sins of all those who are cleansed by this water and bring them forth as inheritors of your glorious kingdom. To you be given praise and honor and worship through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. You renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises. Let us join together. Do you believe in God the Father? You believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. You will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Can I see you? I'm here. I see you. Am I going to wake you up? You can hold that so I can see. Joan Catherine, child of God, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. No, that was kind of cold, huh? Yeah. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for freeing your sons and daughters from the power of sin and for raising them up to a new life through this holy sacrament. Pour your Holy Spirit upon Joan Catherine, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge in the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Amen. Joan Catherine, child of God, 
You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. No. What's that? Yeah. You're doing really good. Let your light so shine before others that they may see the good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, the giver of all life, look with kindness upon Josh and Liz. Let them ever rejoice in the gift you have given them. Make them teachers and examples of righteousness for their children. Strengthen them in their own baptism so that they may share eternally with their children the salvation you have given them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So I know many pastors take this moment to walk up and down and introduce Joan. But I'm not the one that brought this little child into the world. So I will let the parents and godparents do that. Through baptism. <laughs> Through baptism, God has made this new sister a member of the priesthood. We all share in Christ Jesus, that we may proclaim the praise of God and bear his creative and redeeming word to all the world. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, child of the same heavenly father, and a worker with us in the kingdom of God. Amen. Now you all may rise. Those who are able. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another here, with horns in the parking lot, and with chat on Zoom. Peace, everyone. Many blessings to each of you and to our new little member, Joan. <laughs> it is great to have you guys here. We are all one. Big See you soon. <laughs> We continue with the offering.
Those who are able, please rise. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in destroying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending proclamation. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We will use a portion of our Eucharistic prayer. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Amen. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. O oh God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast, grace our table with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Amen. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. In Christ's presence there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet.
For those in our parking lot and on Zoom, receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken and shed for you. Those who are able, please rise. And now the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Life-giving God, through this meal, you have bandaged our wounds Amen. and fed us with your mercy. Amen. Now send us forth to the life for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Following our dismissal, all are warmly invited and encouraged to uh, join us in the fellowship hall for a continued time of being together in celebration and conversation. Receive the blessing. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. peace and love your neighbor.